while I'm still stuck at home, there are plenty of things I'm grateful for right now. Spring weather stopped by Denver for about the last week, and I've been spending quite a bit of time outside. I also just picked up some spontaneously fermented sours, one of my absolute favorite styles of beer. As the name suggests, spontaneous sours aren't inoculated with modern yeast or bacteria cultures, but rather, they're inoculated by naturally occurring yeast and bacteria from the air. Traditionally, these beers are sent from the boil kettle to a large, shallow vessel called a cool ship to cool overnight, and that's where the magic happens. As the beer cools, air makes contact with the surface of the beer and boom, spontaneous fermentation. That may sound simple enough, but successfully pulling this off requires a ton of time and attention to detail. I guess now is as good a time as any to give it a shot. Now, let's make some beer. While my strike water heats up, I'm adjusting the water profile for this beer using gypsum, calcium chloride, and a little bit of lactic acid. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. For this beer, I'm using 55% Pilsner malt, 36% unmalted wheat, and 9% pale two-row. For the mash schedule, I'm going all in with the turbid mash. Turbid mashing is similar to the decoction method we used for the Hellas Lager a couple weeks ago, except I'll be starting with a thick mash at a pretty low temperature and then gradually adding boiling water to raise the mash temperature throughout the course of the mash. For the first step, I'm shooting for a mash temperature of 113 degrees, so I have this Anvil Foundry brew system set to 117 for mashing. And we want this first step to be thick, and I mean thick. So I only added enough water to cover the bottom of the grain basket by about an inch or so. All right, time to mash in. I'll keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated and I'll start a timer for 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes and time to move on to the next step in the mash schedule. Our target temperature is 136 and in order to get there, I'm pulling boiling water from this Gigawort brew kettle and adding it to the mash. This will not only raise the temperature, but also thin the mash. I'm using a glass pitcher to do this, but using the pump would work too. Once we're up to 136, I'll start a timer for 10 minutes. All right, 10 quick minutes later, and it's time for the first turbid draw. I'm pulling a quarter of a gallon of wort from the mash. I also need to add enough boiling water to bring this thing up to 150 for the next step. Once we're up to the target temperature, I'll start a timer for 30 minutes. Now, the turbid draw I pulled needs to go up to 185 and hang out there until the end of the mash. To keep things simple, I'll just use the gigawort for that and I'll raise the temperature on the anvil for the rest of the mash steps. Okay. Our first turbid draw is hanging steady at 185 and the 30 minute mash timer just went off. Time for the next turbid draw, one gallon this time. And then I'll also move the mash temperature up to 162 for another 30 minutes.
That's 30 minutes, and it's about time we wrap this thing up. I'm returning all of the work back to the mash, which should raise the temperature to 168 for our final step. 10 more minutes and the mash is complete. Okay, time to yank these grains and get our boil started. I'm going no sparge today, so now that the basket is up and out of the wort, I'm cranking this Anvil Foundry brew system to full blast. was quick. We're up to full boil and we're going to be here for a while. Boil times for traditional spontaneous sours get insanely long. I mean so long that commercial breweries will change shifts and boil their wort into the wee hours of the night. I, on the other hand, am shooting for about a two hour boil. This is a super small batch so evaporation will happen much faster compared to commercial scale. Okay, it's been an hour, so it's time for our first and only hop addition. For this one gallon batch, I'm adding 10 grams of aged Cascade hops. I like to buy these big bags of whole cone hops, and I just leave the bag slightly open so oxygen can come and go. They smell like funky, cheesy little flowers, just what we need for this type of beer. We've got one hour left to go. And just like that, we're ready to cool. Traditionally, we'd be running this off into a cool ship, but at this scale, the surface area to volume math just doesn't work out the same. Instead, I'm leaving the wort in the kettle and adding a screen to the top to keep the weird stuff out. This might seem crazy, but I'm also going to leave this blood orange rind on the screen and leave this whole setup under our apple tree in the backyard to cool overnight. Hopefully the combination of these will inoculate the wort. It's been about 12 hours, and the only thing left to do is move the wort into the carboy, pop an airlock on, and cross our fingers. I'm going to stash this in my cellar at around 60 degrees, and we'll see what happens. More to come. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>